Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. As you know, in the explosion uh, last night in the basement lab of Post Building, uh, we had an injury. A 29-year-old uh, female visiting researcher was injured. Uh, she was taken by ambulance to Queen's Hospital last night in, in serious condition. Two of our uh, Department of Public Safety officers and uh, one of our graduate students assisted in evacuating the student last night, and I'm very grateful for the work that they did. Our thoughts and prayers are with the individual affected, with family, and with friends. It's been, it is always a blow at the university when there is an accident of this kind. We're extremely grateful to those first three responders who acted so quickly to get the injured, injured individual to the hospital. <clears throat> I'd also like to extend our gratitude to the Hawaii, uh, the Honolulu Police Department, Fire Department, EMS, and the Red Cross for all of their swift work in reaching a conclusion here. And again, let me say that our thoughts and prayers are with the individual who was injured. With that, let me turn it over to Dean Brian Taylor, who can tell you a little more details about the incident. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, the lab is operated by the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute and focuses on renewable energy and degradable bioplastics. An experiment was in progress to grow cells by feeding them a mixture of low pressure hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. Since 2008, when that project began, the process has been used almost daily and without incident. Clearly, something unexplained happened last night. Minority administration has been and will continue to coordinate the response of multiple campus units to this event. The post-incident follow-up started last night and is ongoing by our Environmental Health and Safety Office, and I'll introduce the director in a minute. We intend to engage national safety experts in the post-incident follow-up. Our institute has routinely engaged national experts to review the safety procedures, and as a result of this incident, HNEI has initiated a comprehensive safety review of all their laboratory operations. Currently, we have a structural engineer on call to assess the structural integrity of the building. Roy from EHSO, if you might make a couple of comments as well. Sure. Yes, it's, um, it's our campus policy and office's policy that all laboratories on campus are inspected uh, annually. This is a requirement from the Hawaii Occupational Safety and Health Standards. Um, this laboratory was last inspected January 2016, and it passed all the requirements for, for the lab. The individual involved has been through our general laboratory safety course and has been given specific training in the procedures at, uh, of the laboratory by the PI. Okay, I, at this point, I think we're going to open up to questions. Well, we'll oh, I'm sorry. Chance. I apologize. Uh, Chancellor, but I will <laughs> Uh, let me just say in conclusion that we hope to get the post facility uh, back in operation as soon as possible. Our primary concern is safety, however. We don't plan to rush things. We will take our, we will do a good job of looking forward uh, on that and we will make safety our prime concern. And again, let me thank everyone who has uh, operated in this case so professionally and gotten us to where we are now. Now I think we have some time for questions. Yes. Uh, you mentioned you gave praise to the first responders, the other students, uh, and or the professors who ever helped. Was she in the laboratory by herself when this happened? Was there anybody in there at the time? And is there any protocol as to should there be somebody else in there based on whatever she was doing at the time? But let me ask Dean Taylor to uh, answer that question. Hey, Howard. Thanks. Um, in fact, at that particular moment, she was alone in the lab. 
uh, not long before the professor in charge of the lab had been with her. There were other uh, staff students, postdocs in nearby labs and, and offices above. And so, in fact, one of those was one of the first responders. Was she doing anything out of the ordinary, or is this something that was routine that she and other members of the team have done time and time again for weeks or months on end? This was a routine deal. Yeah, it was. And are we talking about hydrogen? Is that what was in the canister? Because that is a, a flammable material. Uh, hydrogen and oxygen uh, can uh, react, but they actually require something. They, they won't in themselves you know, do something like that. So something happened out of the ordinary. We, we don't know what that is yet. But it was hydrogen she was working with? The, the, the cells grow on a mixture of gases that includes hydrogen, oxygen, and CO2. All things are in our atmosphere. So they were, they were taking higher pressure, small cylinders, and putting a, mix, a combination of things into a, a smaller, low pressure cylinder to be the feed for these cells to grow with. By all appearances, externally, it looks to be a relatively new building. Uh, is it up to date in terms of everything that you need to ensure the safety? And, and was that specific area where she was working that was in fact designed to be a lab yeah. for these experiments to be conducted in? The post building was constructed in 1996, so it's about 20 years old. Uh, it's a very modern lab building with amazing amounts of equipment in it. This was a dedicated lab for this purpose. Um, yes? Do you have an estimate as to how much damage uh, costs would be? No, in fact, uh, so the fire department and the police department had primary control over the space last night. They handed it over to back to us about 10 p.m. We've, uh, we've been, the first thing we need to do is actually determine the structural integrity of the building. So that's what we've been working towards. We have secured the building. We haven't let other folks into the building. So assessment operations and so forth, we haven't conducted yet until we can get the structural engineering determined. Can you describe for me what that room looks like right now, the lab? I personally have not seen that room. Has and anyone uh, of the speakers here, uh, no one else has either. We've seen, we've seen pictures from fire department and the police department, but I'd rather not go further at this time until we have a, a chance to assess things. Is this particular room equipped with any video surveillance or, or photographs that obviously uh, not that you would release them anytime soon, but that might be able to lend some clues down the road as to what did happen? So there have been photographs taken by the police and the, and the fire department of, of the but space. Actually the but actually, but, but that room is not uh, monitored with a self recording video right. system. To your point. Yeah, thank you. How long is the building expected to? Remain closed. So we're hoping to get a this the structural uh, determination this afternoon. We will be putting out another statement by five o'clock tonight. We'd like to be able to get back to routine operations tomorrow, but at this point, I I don't have an answer till the engineering study is done. There are obviously other multiple labs and, and, and different offices that use that space down below. Has the integrity of any of the other adjoining offices, spaces, laboratories been compromised, or will they be able to get back into their spaces? Uh, as long as the two primary weight-bearing columns that are within the lab itself are proven to be fine, uh, the walls of the lab are not weight-bearing and are not at issue. So if those are determined to be fine, then we can reoccupy the building and everywhere else. We'll, we'll secure to just that portion. Will there be experiments conducted? If you, if you guys open this tomorrow and you still don't know exactly what caused uh, what happened yesterday to happen, will you still be conducting experiments? We won't be using that lab for some time. Or any labs but, down but, there. But other labs that do all sorts of other things will get back to normal operations, classes, offices, staff, will get on with their life. Maybe this is a question uh, for Mr. Takekawa, but ha has there been, in recent memory, or to the best of your knowledge, anything even similar to this happening uh, on the University of Hawaii campus? No. This is, this is way out of, order, out of the ordinary for us. 
but it's something that you plan for, uh, drill for, and know is within the realm of possibility, I assume? Well, it's always a possibility, and that's why I think we have our uh, DPS. I think our emergency response to the incident was was really was handled very, very well. When when you do your uh, annual inspections for for buildings such as this with labs and with gases that, that that can be dangerous in certain situations, can you talk about what are some of the details involved with inspecting them? Well, we primarily look at how they're stored whether the, uh, you know, the, the ventilation systems are, are working, whether the sprinkler systems are working. We're looking more at you know, the physical integrity of the, of the, of the space itself. These uh, gases that are in large tanks, um, as far as uh, safety protocols for them, are they supposed to be tied down? Yes. And just, and just to clarify, these are not large cylinders, you know, the these big guys, these are smaller ones, and they were being, it was being transferred, partially transferred to a sort of middleware container at even lower pressure. Okay. So it was, it was being moved to... So, so, so uh, gases were being bled off to form a mixture at a lower pressure, which was a combination of CO2 plus hydrogen plus oxygen. As you said, all those maybe by themselves are not combustible, but does it give you some indication that there must have been some type of a spark, that there had to be something of that nature that obviously triggered the explosion? Well, by default, there was an explosion, and so there had to be an ignition event. We don't know what that was at this time. As far as the policy of the laboratory, is there... Um like a minimum requirement of people to be in the room at any given time? Is, is it no. Time no minimum requirement. No. I mean, sometimes there's no people there, sometimes there's three people there. Well, for example, if one person is in there, is another, is a second person required? It's not required. Can you give us a little confirmation again about what time the explosion was reported? <coughs> it was just before 6 o'clock, I believe, 5.50 something. As far as uh, safety protocols when doing this type of experiment, when this researcher is familiar with them, you're saying, what are some of the details involving those? You know, I'd say a best question, I think, uh, would be for Roy, because they, they go through a training protocol for those types of things, and then the individual labs also do some training. I don't know if you could speak about, well, she had just recently um, yeah, we, some training. We provide general laboratory safety training. The specifics of what she was doing whether you know, the, the exact procedures for mixing the, the gases or whatever, that would be handled by the principal investigator of the laboratories. But as far as uh, how they're supposed to do it to make sure it's done safely, uh, how, what exactly do you tell them in order that they do this properly? Again, we don't, we don't look at every single experiment that's being done. That's handled through the... the Maybe generally what the folks teach in the uh, training. In our laboratory safety training, we'll handle properties of flammable gases, how to properly store them, how to handle them in general. Okay. And what is, the, what is the proper way to handle them and store them? For the cylinders? Yeah. Well, that they be secure, they have the proper regulators. Securing them how so? Well, Chain, if I could, if chaining I could to say, the wall. I mean, as I said, this, this project began in 2008. This is a procedure that's done nearly every day for eight years. Um, this is a, so in, other, in, terms, so in terms of the training related to a new investigator coming into the lab, because there's been a series of this over time, right, the PI the, uh, <coughs> passes on to each folks and they themselves to each other how to do things the right way with their particular equipment for that particular deal. So this, this thing was routine, um, and, and so there was, people coming into the lab are familiarized with what is done in that lab that way when they start. That's what's required to get them up to speed. And, and without being up to speed, they're not allowed to do things themselves or to be alone or any of the above. So once they are practicing, and, and, and she's been here for uh, at least six months working on this project, okay? 
so she's folks. familiar with all of the all of the protocols as far as what yeah. should be done. And and has been through the general training and the lab specific training. And it's not necessary to have somebody with her when she's doing these particular. That's correct. Uh, can we give <coughs> just a, maybe take a two minute break just for a second, uh, Dean Taylor? I think we might have an update on the building if you step outside. Excuse me, second, John. Although, in fact, our structural engineer consultant has been on site into the lab and has just confirmed that the building is sound and safe. So we will be able to uh, reopen it. We have a lot of staff, students, and faculty who've got things that they'd like to get out of there real soon. Um, we will, as I said, be putting out another statement by five tonight about what's going to be fully, well, where we will be in terms of full operations tomorrow in terms of classes or not. We, I have, I'm, I'm just getting this information as we... So staff will be able to come in in the next hour or so you'll start to... So, so we'll start to, we'll work with our campus security in terms of access for others. And sorry, I sir, I interim interrupted a question you would Yeah, I just wanted to know that the, the lab has a specific design to withstand, like in case of emerging, this kind of explosion. And if you're dealing with volatile uh, uh, gases like hydrogen, if there's a spark, is the electrical system uh, a different than your normal electrical? Because if you, it could actually cause a spark and something like this could happen. Do they have a specific design for these labs? The labs have a specific design, but, but the design... I would say is not like a bomb shelter or something anticipating bad things happening. Indeed, the lab did survive, the building did survive this thing occurring, but it's not something that you're sort of planning for, if you will. Is this, one sir? last question, go ahead. Is this lab specifically for grad students and uh, researchers, or is undergrad students allowed to utilize this lab as well? So, in, in most cases, um, you know, other than things like radiation safety or, or bio level three, biosafety level three type things, general research labs on the university are uh, open to faculty, staff, and students who've had the correct training to be able to use them. So, so certainly this lab in the past has had not only faculty, postdoctoral scholars, visiting scholars, graduate and undergraduate students. It's, it's part of routine operations. And I think that's it for us. Um, we'll make sure we get some updates out to you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.